Assalamu alaikum uh, listeners. My name is Zafar Haq. I'm your host for this show. We're talking about health and well-being. I hope you uh, are enjoying Ramadan. We're coming down to the last few days of Ramadan and is, uh, mashallah, I hope it's going well for everybody. Um, today we're going to be discussing a subject that we normally would not like to be discussing. It's something that I personally don't like discussing and a lot of people out there probably won't want to talk about this. But it's something that's really, really important. We're going to be discussing cancer and the effects of cancer and how we can screen ourselves for cancer. And in particular, we're going to be talking about bowel cancer in the first part of the show and cervical cancer in the second part of the show. It is really important to understand that cancer is a very serious illness and, and can really affect you. Um, and a lot of cancers are detected very late on and in, in, that, in those circumstances, the chances of survival aren't very good. So you won't be able to grow up and, 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 and uh, maybe see your grandchildren grow up or your great-grandchildren. And it does have serious, serious implications. That's why we're going to be discussing it, because there is a huge problem of actually cancer not being detected early enough. So the survival rates of cancer aren't very good in the city. In particular, um, there is a huge problem of people not coming forward to be screened for these cancers. And we've managed to get probably one of the most utmost experts in the, in the field in Leicestershire. Uh, and I would like to introduce you to our guest, Dr. Richard Robinson, who's a gastroenterologist at Leicester Hospitals, UHL, and actually works out of all three sites. That's the Glenfield General Hospital and the Royal Infirmary. Welcome to the show, uh, Richard. Thank you, Zafar. Um, excellent. And Richard is a specialist in bowel cancer and screening of bowel cancer at Leicester Hospitals. How long have you been in post, Richard? Well, I've been in Leicester as a consultant for nearly 20 years. But we've been running bowel cancer screening for about 10 years. And as an independent centre, we've been um, rolled out for about five years. And actually, we're one of the few centres in the UK that's fully rolled out offering bowel cancer screening to all its uh, relevant population. So actually we have a specialist service here rec recently set up over the last four or five years and you're, you're the head of that service are you? That's right yes. So um, the bowel screening service or the bowel cancer what is bowel cancer? So bowel cancer is, is a cancer arising from the from the large bowel, so very close to your to your bottom. It's why people don't like talking about it, really. But it's a very serious problem in the UK. It's about the fourth most common cancer in Britain, um, and it's the second most common cause of cancer death. So to give you some idea, there's something like forty or forty-five thousand deaths per year in the UK due to bowel cancer. That's nearly forty forty-five people per day dying of bowel cancer. That's huge numbers of people uh, dying from bowel cancer. And that's why we decided that it should be really discussed and we should be talking about it because I've heard so many stories in, from people in Leicester uh, in particular where they've realised they've got cancer and it's too late for them to do anything or the hospitals to do anything and the survival rates aren't very good. And, and, and that's why screening is so, so important. Um, if you want to uh, uh, give us a call or ask any questions, uh, this is Radio Ramadan on Eva 102.5 FM. On our telephone numbers are 0116 212 9324. Our text number is 07450 925 084. You're listening to Radio Ramadan on Eva 102.5 FM. Please give us a call if you've had any any screening tests done and please send us a message if you if you want because it's really important that we want to get the listeners involved in this subject because this is a serious matter and we want to make make sure that we can help as many people as possible over the next few years to, to deal with this problem and actually try and screen for as many of these cancers as possible um so what how common is cancer bowel cancer in in, in a place like leicester or leicestershire well, your lifetime risk of bowel cancer is something like 1 in 14 men will develop it during their lifetime and about 1 in 18 women will develop it during their lifetime. So it's a big problem. Lots of us will get the condition. So it is, it is going to be quite common in, in a place like Leicester. So what are the symptoms of bowel cancer? So the symptoms of bowel cancer generally are blood, so blood in the poo or, or bleeding from the bottom, 
a change in the bowel habit. So if you normally go to the toilet once a day and start going two or three times a day, if you get a bit of diarrhea, a bit of loose toilet, and that goes on for a few weeks, that's an important symptom. If you have unexplained tummy pain, or you start to lose weight, or if you're feeling tired and lethargic, all of those are the symptoms that you want to be looking out for, and those are things that you should go and talk to your GP about. So the p first port of call, really, is your GP. And, um, you know, does it have to be all of these symptoms or just some of these symptoms? Or is it something that you, you would recommend people, if they don't feel comfortable, just go along to your GP and have a discussion and have a chat and see? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It hasn't got to be all those symptoms by any means. But, um, but certainly if you notice some blood... When you go to the toilet, that's an important symptom and one that your GP would be happy to discuss with you and refer you on for, to a specialist like myself if, uh, um, if they think it's, it, it's important. Um, you're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. Our telephone number is 0116 212 9324 or you can send us a text message on 07450 925084. You're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. So if when the patient or the person turns up to their GP surgery and says, I've got these symptoms, what happens next? What, what happens from there? Well, the GP will examine them and make sure that there's nothing obvious that they can feel. And they'll decide then, based on that, um, how best to refer. There's a, uh, the two-week wait pathway, which where patients with suspected cancer are fast-tracked to an endoscopy. A camera examination is the best way, really, of... Um, of screening and looking for bowel cancer. So that's where that's what the GP will organise next. And how treatable is it? Is it how treatable is it in its early phases? If it's if if somebody goes to their GP quite quickly and says, Look, I'm not feeling right, there's something quite wrong and gets referred quite quickly, how treatable is it for those people and how treatable is it for the other people as well? Yeah, so this is this is absolutely crucial. The 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 outlook from bowel cancer is absolutely dependent on how early it's found. So if you catch bowel cancer early, your chances of surviving five years are virtually 100%, about 95%. However, if you wait and your symptoms are advanced and the disease is advanced, then your chances of survival fall to something like five or 6%. So it's massive. Early cancer diagnosis for bowel cancer makes absolutely all the difference. So it's a huge difference. That is ninety-five percent to five percent, and 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 realistically, you know, if people have any of those symptoms, what would you be saying to them? You know, book an appointment to go and see their GP. Absolutely, don't don't. The the, the expression has been coined by one of the charities is "Don't die of embarrassment." If you get symptoms, go and get yourself checked out. And I think this is the problem, isn't it? This is one of the embarrassing type illnesses that people think, oh, I don't really want to go to my GP to discuss my poo and, and what's going on. Uh, and, and, and people, especially, I think, from, from our own communities, the ethnic communities, we're particularly a bit more embarrassed. I would be slightly, I think. But you've got to get over that embarrassment because actually your life expectancies goes down dramatically. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we do know that that Leicester City in particular tends to present quite late, a patient, patients tend to present quite late, so they're not engaging in the early diagnosis and early screening that, that we're offering. So I would encourage you absolutely not to uh, ignore symptoms, but come along and get, get them checked out. And it's vital if they want to see their grandchildren grow up, and maybe see them get married, and maybe see their great-grandchildren. It really does have a huge impact on how long you live doesn't it? Well, absolutely. And, and the, the really good thing about bowel cancer is that it's generally pretty slow growing. And we know that it starts from little polyps, little growths in the bowel that are benign, and you can chop them off, and you can chop them off before they even become cancerous. So um, absolutely, if you get it seen and get it diagnosed early, you'll do extremely well. So early prevention, is, early intervention is really, really, really valuable in this case. Absolutely. Yeah. And... Um, what are the causes of bowel cancer? Do we have any information on that? Do we know what causes this kind of illness uh, or this Well, we, we, know, we know that both genetics and, um, and lifestyle play a part here. And it's estimated that about 50, 50% 50 of, um, of the causes of cancer are lifestyle related. So being overweight, taking little exercise, eating a diet high in uh, red meat, high in processed meat, low in fibre, 
All of these are factors that, that really can contribute to, 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 to bowel cancer. We also know that in about a third of cases, there's a genetic element. So if you've got a first degree relative or a family member who's got bowel cancer, that's another thing that makes us more interested in, in, in checking it out for you. So if you have any relatives in there, uh, and also, also, you know, uh, somebody's just asking a question, can hemorrhoid and pile lead to cancer? Can that happen? No, they're separate things completely. They're, they're both completely benign and, 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 and of no concern. Those they don't, they don't go on to cause cancer. So they don't actually grow, so they're, they're, they're actually pretty harmless in comparison. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you've got any questions on this subject, please don't hesitate. We've got the, the expert here, so you're more than welcome to ask any questions. 0116 212 9324 is our telephone number. Our text number is 07450 925084. Or this is Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. Or if you've got any questions, you can also follow us on Facebook, and it's on Facebook as well. Um, now, this, there is a screening test for all, all, all these people, uh, for all, all people who have this issue. And at a certain age, there's a, there's a screening test that has to happen as well a mandatory one almost well it's uh, not it's, it's not mandatory it's um it's it's, voluntary. it's offered yeah it's, it's offered it, it's offered to everybody and this is something that leicester are particularly proud of because we're one of the few cities in the uk that's actually managed to roll this out completely so there are two there are two so can i just ask there uh, so not every city has this we have an advantage over most cities that we've got this rolled out we've got this facility but the uptake is very low. Absolutely. So in Leicestershire, 100% of GP practices are covered. Across the country, it's less than 60% of GP practices are covered. So Leicester really are ahead of the game here. So I would encourage you all to, 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 to take up on this offer. So the, there are currently two screening um, um, systems. One is for people aged 55. So just after your 55th birthday, you get invited up for what they call a sigmoidoscopy, which is just a, a camera examination at the the bottom half of the bowel. This is a quick five-minute examination. And the idea is to try and find precancerous polyps or, uh, or early cancers and to remove them there and then. After that, when you're 60, between the age of 60 and 74, you're sent a, a kit through the post, which is a, um, a kit to test your poo for small traces of blood. And that kit is sent every two years. Um, and that looks for traces of blood. And then if it's positive, you come up and have a camera examination. Now, lo locally, for the first one, the, the, the camera examination, we have approximately about a 47% uptake across the patch. It's much, much lower in Leicester City, but 47%. For the second test, the poo test, it's something like 60%. But again, Leicester City is one of the lowest uptake areas in the country so people in leicester don't really take up this screening test even though it's available free of charge and is available locally and you're saying 47 percent probably leicester is a lot lower than that that's what you're indicating to me yeah leicester is much lower than that and uh, and sadly we also know that people in leicester are more likely to present as an emergency with severe late stage cancers than they are elsewhere so we're really trying to address really trying to make sure people come along and have that test to get it diagnosed early. Okay, we have a, a question. Is rectal cancer associated with homosexuality? Is that...? Uh, no, not no, really, no. No. So there's no evidence of that at all? No. No. Okay, and, 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 and uh, so the screening test, uh, the camera one, how evasive is it? Is it something that people should be scared of? Is it something that anybody has had done? If you've had any of the screening tests done... Please give us a call on 0116 212 9324 or you can text us 07450 925084. And how did you find that screening test? Was it something that you found comfortable or uncomfortable? And how, how, what are the tests like on, on, you know, on patients who've had it done? Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a five minute procedure. We do, we do them every evening at Glenfield Hospital. We do 10 in an evening. It literally is five minutes. Clearly, it involves driving a camera up, up the bottom. So, I can understand why people are embarrassed, but, but you must remember that the advantage of finding bowel cancer early is so enormous that, um, that the inconvenience... You can suffer the embarrassment, uh, because well, actually, if it's going to give you 20 years of your life, 
Absolutely. Except, yeah. it's, 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 it's better than taking medication for 20 years. It's just five minutes and it's done and dusted and move on. Well, we know that if, you, if, you, if your cancer is diagnosed well, through a screening procedure, you're much, much more likely to survive yeah. than if you don't. Uh, a question coming in. Are the patients awake or feel the pain during the procedure? Is there any pain in it? So a small proportion of people do experience some discomfort, but you're wide awake. It's a, it's a, it's a five-minute procedure. So it's very, very quick, and they can't really feel too much. No. And, and they're, they're awake, so they don't have to be um, sedated or anything like that at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. And um, what uh, uptake in Leicester is very low. Why do you think that is? Why is it so low? Why, why aren't people coming forward when we've got all these facilities on our doorstep and we've got quite a lot of GPs, all the GPs involved in doing this and supporting this? That's a very good question and one that we, we, we don't know the answer to. We do know that uh, lots of the big cities face the same problem, but, but Leicester seems to be doing particularly badly uh, in terms of uptake, which is very frustrating as we are uh, one of the few places that are offering it to everybody. So we've got the capacity, we've got plenty of uh, lists availability, so I'd encourage everybody to, 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 to take up the offer when it comes through the post. And, and if people don't take it up when, the, when it comes to them and they miss the opportunity... What is the next step if they decide, oh, well, actually, oh, they were busy or something happens and, and they, they realise, actually, we should have done that. Can they go to their GP and have that test done afterwards? Is that possible as well? Because I'm sure there's people listeners out there who've, who've probably been offered to go and have the test done at 55 and they haven't. Can they, can they go again later? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. They can, uh, they can, they can um, sign up separately so they can the information's on the paper that they receive there's a telephone number to ring and they can ring and get a second kit sent out or a second invite sent out so we'd be more than happy to to re-invite people who've missed the original opportunity who do it okay we've got a question coming in on facebook uh Shamin suleiman uh, this is a very important topic i think one of the issues is older people do not know what the screening test is all about it takes some explaining I appreciate that there's some information in other languages, but I still think there's a barrier in regards to this. And there is a barrier, a huge barrier in this. You're exactly right, uh, Charmaine. Uh, the reality is that people don't discuss it. And I think the actual discussion needs to take place in families, in groups of people, and to say, hang on a second, granddad or, or your uh, mum or dad, you need to take this screening test. We want you to live for the next 20 years. And if I had the opportunity and I had my mum and dad alive, I would want them to be taking those screening tests because it's vital because they, it will help them live a lot, lot longer. And what you've said about 95% chance, early, early detection and survival rate is great. But when you look at the 5%, when it's very late on, it's scary. No, no, you're absolutely right. And I think um, yeah, young, young people should encourage their parents and their grandparents, say, you've had this invite come through the post, you really shouldn't turn it down. They'll be doing you a huge disservice. So having a conversation about it, not being embarrassed about it, is, is, is absolutely vital. Um, uh, we've just had uh, another guest arrive who's come in for the latest show, but I'm just going to ask Yustra, isn't it? Yes. Uh, welcome to Yustra. Uh, she's a, you're a practice nurse, uh, just newly qualified. Uh, have you had any experience of some of the bowel cancer screening tests? Not bowel, but cervical cancer, yeah. Cervical cancer, yeah. okay. And, 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 but it's all sort of the same sort of area. You know, we really want to encourage people to be out there, to be actually going and taking these screening tests, um, be it bowel cancer, be it any other cancers, because the survival rate as the expert has said, is absolutely huge, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. Um, when you were saying about why don't the elder people population know, it's also about the fact that they don't speak about it with, amongst the families. It's more like seen as, some families see it as um, a curse, so they don't yeah. speak about cancer as much yeah. as they should. So that's why they don't go ahead and take the screening early, and then it's late diagnosis, which leads to early mortality. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And, and, and we, so we need more people to discuss this amongst their own families, because the facilities are there. We've heard from the expert. We've heard from the expert that actually screening is being done. We've got 100% uptake from the GPs. There is a, a proper pathway for you to get a cure and be cured quite quickly as soon as the first symptoms are, are thought. Finally, what would you like to say, Richard? You know, you've got to... Uh, uh, what would your message be to the public here? Well, my message would be that, that Leicester is one of the centres that really is um, leading the way in terms of bowel cancer screening and that because we know the 
outlook is so much dependent upon how early you find it. You really shouldn't be waiting to have symptoms. You really need to be having a conversation amongst yourselves to make sure that when you're invited, you take part. And a big increase in the number of people with early diagnosis in Leicester would be fantastic. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Richard Robinson. Thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. We're going to be talking cervical cancer after the break. So please, please join us after the break. Thank you.
Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the show. This is the Health and Wellbeing Show. You were listening earlier to uh, Dr. Richard Robinson who was talking about bowel cancer and he gave us some really good uh, insight into the bowel cancer treatment services in Leicester and why we shouldn't be embarrassed when we're going to see the doctor and why we should be taking up the screening test and we had some quite positive messages as well. We need to be talking about these subjects. These are really, really important subjects. They're going to affect us uh, tomorrow. We need to be making sure that all types of cancer we keep an eye out for and the symptoms of and go regularly to our GPs to check if there's any issues and make sure we take our screening tests. There's a lot of screening tests out there that are provided free of charge by the NHS and we need to be making sure we access them uh, because that's the only way we're going to live long, healthy lives. And there's a huge difference between the life expectancy for somebody who lives in Leicester City and somebody who might live in some of the villages um, in the county, uh, almost 10 years life expectancy difference. So somebody living to an average age of, age of 70 in the city uh, would actually be living to the average age of 80 in the county, which is a huge difference. And m the major part of this problem is screening tests and lack of taking up of these screening tests. And it's really, really important that we do that. You're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. Our telephone number is 0116 212 9324 or our text number is 07450 You're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. We're discussing health and well-being and I've got another special guest in with me today. Thank you very much for coming in. Yusra, who's a practice nurse at uh, Melbourne Community Health Centre, Commun which is the health centre on Melbourne Road and Berners Street corner. Very large population it covers. I think there's about 10,000 patients 13, you have there. 13,000. 13,000 yeah. patients, wow. So it's a really large practice. And how long have you been there? Seven months. Seven months. months. So you're fairly new yeah. to the NHS, are you? Yeah. Very good. And and how has your experience been working for the NHS? Have you, are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's been positive. It's been Patients positive? Patients make a big difference. So when they come, they come in positive, you feel positive about the job. And and, 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 and you live locally in Leicester as well. So yeah. it's people you know probably come to your surgery. No, I, I was surprised. I thought it would be, but no, there's thousands of patients you don't know. Thousands yeah. of patients you don't know. And, and how have you found working in the NHS? Do you find it it's easy and... Are you learning as you're going along as well? Yeah, so I have to do the trainings, uh, training courses independently. So because we didn't cover a lot of the things that um, we did um, in primary care, you don't cover a lot of the things that we do when doing the nursing course. So you're doing stuff as you're going along. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you're learning all the time. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And and what made you go into the NHS out of interest? Because you're quite young, and you know you could have done anything, I suppose. What made you decide to go into the NHS? I don't know. I knew I wanted to do something um, in the medical field. So I don't know, I was just browsing and I came across nursing. I thought, let's just give it a go. I didn't think it's something that I wanted to do from a young age. It just happened as time went. And are you finding it rewarding? Do you enjoy it? Definitely. definitely. What, what do you enjoy most out of it? Just patients leaving positive out of the room. It's like, you know, you've made a difference. Sometimes they come in for one problem, but they start opening up about other problems and you know you can be there for them. And that's the most... That you really, really find that positive. And, yeah. and, and actually, do do people, when they're going, going away, say, thank you very much. Yeah. Really, you know, you really made it comfortable for me. And people, you have that positive yeah, feedback as definitely, well. Definitely, yeah. And I think that probably drives you even more, does it? Yeah, you want to be there more for the rest of the patients that are there that haven't come to you yet. Excellent. And, and, and uh, you've come along today to discuss... Uh, it's a topic that uh, we are discussing, as, as I said earlier in the show. I apologise to people because, you know... We don't really want to discuss these issues, but we need to discuss these issues. Uh, we were talking about bowel cancer earlier, and now we're going to be discussing cervical cancer. So, you know, you what what made you interested in this? Because uh, this, you know, we rang around a couple of uh, practices to find out some various different people to to try and get to come onto the show to talk about cervical cancer. What, why did you pick this subject in particular? So there's many patients who have come forward and have declined screening, most of which don't actually know what the screening is about. And I find it, you know, it's amazing because it's such an amazing service out there and people aren't making, aren't utilising what's there. And it's important we educate our population so they take action and do what they need to do to protect their health. 
So it's much more about self-awareness, self-promoting your own health and taking up on the screening. And that really gave you a buzz to make sure that you, you do as much as you can. Yeah, I personally haven't had the screening because I'm too young, but still passionate about promoting it amongst the rest of the population. Yeah, And, and it's particularly women uh, who don't come along to their GP, so just don't want to discuss this. But there is quite a lot of female doctors and nurses in the system now, in across a lot of NHS surgeries as well. And hopefully that will break down these barriers because it wasn't like that before, was it? No, hopefully, but I think there's quite a lot of things to consider. So, I mean, it's education. Sometimes it's language barriers. Sometimes it's the husbands who might say no. So women don't mm. come forward unless they've got permission from their husbands. So it's many different things that we need to consider and break the barriers down to. And have you had any personal experiences with different sort of uh, cases that you've dealt with in the past that you think, oh... Actually, we need to change things so that people more engage more with this screening test. Definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, anything that you can discuss or anything that you you can talk yeah, about? Yeah, so f- some might be that they just don't want to come forward because they feel like it's an uncomfortable process, they're worried about their dignity. Others will be like, like I mentioned about the husbands, they won't come yeah. forward unless the husband has agreed. Um, and most likely the husband won't know what's going on. He doesn't with understand the it, really. Yeah, with the patients that I've seen anyway. They have no idea what the test is for. They, they, some One husband assumed it's a biopsy. So it's just about explaining it to them and then taking it forward from there. Which is the major problem about explanation yeah. about it, isn't it? Really? Getting them to listen to somebody who can break it down to them. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you've, you've been only new in the job seven, eight months. Um, so what, what, why... What are the symptoms of cervical cancer? Do you, do you, do you know? There's bleeding in between um, periods, bleeding post-intercourse, might be pain. And, and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and how, how um, accommodating are GPs and nurses if people come in with those symptoms? You know, what, what, are they really quite good? Yeah, we check straight away whether a smear has been done recently. And if not, then it's done straight away. We take swabs if needed to. Action is taking, taken straight away. And, and, and um, the screening test itself, you know, do you, do, you, do you perform the screen test as a nurse? Do you yes. do those? Yeah. So how many patients do you normally get in a week or how many? How so often do you do that? Mo- and how uncomfortable is it really for patients, do you think? At the moment, I'm still training to do them, but I still carry out the test. So I've done about 26 patients in total since starting in November. Um, we try to make it as comfortable as possible. Some things can't be avoided. They'll have to take the trousers down. They have to lie down on the bed, you know, but we always tell them don't worry we'll pull the curtain around do as much as we can as healthcare professionals and 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 actually you know um the the actual uh screening test it helps detect cancers early so survival rate from cervical cancer actually improves quite dramatically as well yep And, and that is that is the driver for doing the screening the screening test is done to help women survive longer with those cancers, and they can survive considerably longer. Yeah. Uh, as we were discussing earlier, we were talking about bowel cancer. The chances of somebody surviving from bowel cancer is 95% better if they're screened early, and 5% if they're not screened early, and it's a late-stage cancer that's detected. Um, and it must be similar figures for cervical cancer. I don't have the figures on me, but yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and, 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 but why do you think there's less Muslim women in particular coming forward to do the screening? Is it just something that they, uh, they don't talk about so they don't actually want to get involved in? Or do they think it's something complicated, do you I think? I think they think it's something else. Like I mentioned, I think like, they think it's a biopsy or something of some sort. And if they've not got any symptoms, they won't come forward. But that's the big point that they're missing, that you shouldn't wait for symptoms to arise. You should come forward beforehand. And, and, and actually, how many people do you think who don't turn up to their cervical cancer screening? There's quite a lot in Leicester that don't because the uptake was very, very low. I think it was less than 40% over the last few months. And there has been a drive to try and encourage more people, um, uh, uh, encourage more people to, to have their tests done. But the, the uptake is very, very low. 
And, and, and do you think we can do more? Or should the NHS be doing more? Or should it actually be down to people doing themselves, themselves actually taking care of their own health as, health as well? I think it's both. So if some, I know women personally who haven't come forward, who know the risks and know the purpose of the service, but they won't come forward because they're worried about what the nurse will think due to their mm. dignity, not having shaved legs, not having shaved down below, which isn't really mm. the main... It's a big problem, I think that is, because we don't look at that. We, we're worried about what's inside, what's going on. And then the other thing is language barriers. I feel like many women have the letter for invites posted to them, but it's in English and they don't understand what's being written. So they're not going to come forward or understand what yeah. the purpose of the I, test is. I, I think that is the point where people in the rest of the family, the children, grandchildren, whoever is around, needs to support their, their, their family yeah. to say look encourage them to go out and have the screening test done be it cervical screening or any other kind of screening because the tests are available they're there to save people's lives they're there to make sure that people live longer and people need to be able to take them up and and every every sort of opportunity goes um, it, it's an opportunity missed to, to, to find out that the person's got cancer or not yeah. and, and it will save their life yeah. Um, how do you feel that when people don't take their tests, do you feel? It makes me angry because it's there and it's such an important test to take. I remind them, so when I went for my training, I was told that there was a 28-year-old 20, um, woman who missed her screenings before and when she had it done, when she had symptoms, she was diagnosed with the aggressive form of cancer. And obviously we, that could have been detected beforehand if she had attended her screening early. Yeah, so, you know, the facilities are there. People need to use the screening tests and, and encourage people, members of your family. It's not embarrassing. Uh, we've got Yusra here who's, uh, who does quite a few of them in her surgery. They try and make you as comfortable as possible. If you've got any thoughts on this, please give us a call. Our telephone number or any questions on this, our telephone number is 0116 212 9324 or our text number is 07450 925084. Or you can uh, send a message on Facebook. This is Ramadan Radio on Eva 102.5 FM. You're listening to Zafar Hack. I'm the host. This is the Health and Wellbeing Show. And we're talking about cancer. We were talking about uh, bowel cancer earlier. Now we're talking about cervical cancer. But it's really important that we've been discussing uh, the screening tests and making sure that you have the screening tests done, be it cervical cancer, be it bowel cancer, or even breast cancer. Um, because people from the Asian community don't just come along, do they? They just don't take this seriously enough, do they? I think it's people within ethnic minorities. It's not just down to Asian community. Yeah, and, 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 and is it, you know, I, I would say to people, you don't, you don't uh, wait for the car to break down until you get it serviced. You actually take it for a service and you get it checked to make sure it's okay. And it's it's an analogy that we we've got to be able to say to people please please go and have your screening tests done um for whatever it might be they're available they're there free of charge we've got gps nurses who wait for people who are always chasing people down to try and get these screening tests done because they will save your life and it's it's quite simple isn't it mm -hmm. um you know in your experience uh, you know you did you did some uh, quite long thesis on and some dissertation, of this stuff. Yes, yeah. so it was on the barriers of early diagnosis of cancer among the BAME communities, that's ethnic minorities and black and Asian communities. So it was the similar findings that I saw and it was patients having lack of um, education on the services or not even being aware that the service is available and then also myths among communities that are having cancer is seen as a curse, which is crazy because it's something that can't be helped it's mm. not done intentionally what are the causes of the cancers cervical cancers in any ideas uh, um, we don't actually have the the consultant expert in with us today but unfortunately i think she's she's been delayed somewhere um there, there's a vaccine available as well isn't there yeah hpv vaccine that girls have between the ages of 12 and 14 so does that prevent it 
Uh, yeah, but we still have to attend screening. I think that's another thing that girls are getting wrong as well, that they feel that because they've had the vaccine, they don't need to attend screenings, which isn't correct. You still have to. So the vaccine is given to them to between the ages of... 12 and 14. 12 and 14. But that doesn't guarantee that they won't get it. No. They still need the screening test. Definitely. And there's that misconception that they don't need to go to the screening yeah. test at all. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, are you encouraging those people or what are you doing to try and encourage them to come in then afterwards? Do they just don't turn up? Is that what happens? Um, some won't turn up. Some will come in and say they don't want it done. So before I get them to sign the form to decline the test, I speak to them and I ask them, what is the reason why you don't want the test done and see if there's anything I can help with and then go from there. Some of them will go back and have a think about it and come back. Some of them will continue just to choose not to have it done choose not to have it done um, and 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 why do you think in particular that muslim women uh don't you know are, don't really want to have the cervical cancer test done uh and, and other sort of some of the other tests as well why why do you think that is is it just because we're a little little bit slow at realizing what's going on or is it because some countries don't have these things and we have them here and they're not used to these things or yes all these various factors to consider yeah, they, oh, and, and, and the uptake is very, very low. And um, we'd love to hear to, of any listeners who have had it done recently. And would we want some kind of words of encouragement for people who have had it done. So if you are listening, uh, please give us a call on 0116 212 9324. Or you can send us a text message on 07450 925084. You're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. Um We've we've been discussing uh, uh, cervical cancer. What other cancer tests do you screen for at your surgery that you do quite quickly and quite easily? What tests do you do there? As a nurse, I do cervical cancer. GPs will probably have different tests. That perform. So it's not too complicated. How long does it actually take? So it takes two two weeks for the patient to get the results. So it's sent by letter. At the moment, there's a backlog, but usually it's two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. And how long does the test itself take when a patient arrives at your surgery? Is it's it is it ten fifteen minutes day. or longer? Oh, it's five to five minutes. I five think, minutes. Yeah. So it's actually quite quick and easy. And and how busy are most of the surgeries? Because a lot of people always tell me, oh, it takes me t- two days to get through to my doctor. And it takes me three weeks to get an appointment with the nurse. How quick and easy is it to get an appointment with your your practice, let's say, with you or with, with somebody else to, to get an appointment? There is a bit of pressure, of course, but we do try our best. Sometimes it might be one week, two weeks delay, but we do get them in as fast as we can. And I've got to say, one of your, your surgeries, the particular one that you you work at, is, is probably one of the better surgeries around mm-hmm. because you've got large facilities, it's fairly new... You've got a lot of patients, so you've got a lot of people working there, and a lot of people from all different communities. And, and I think I, I remember reading that in your particular surgery, this people can speak 16 or 17 different languages. I didn't know that myself. <laughs> yeah. It was on, it was on there on, on one of the papers that I read, and I, and I was amazed. And I think you actually have a Somali GP as well, or some, um, is it Bengali? Bengali GPs, yeah. A, a new do. Bengali GP as we well. Do. Yeah. So, who speaks Bengali? So you actually cater for quite a few different languages as well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, you've been doing this for a few, only a few months. What do the GP say about this screening test, and what do the practice managers say? That you know how how have you gone out of your way or tried to go out of your way to improve not just cervical screening but just general screening of cancers at your surgery? Because I think you've done something, uh, you know, a few different things as well. So just speaking to patients and, for example, with me personally, when um, moms come in for um, vaccines for the bit children, I'll ask them, have you had your screening done? Is there a reason why? So that's completely out of my own will. They've come in for a different purpose, but I'll make sure I go out of my way and speak to them, see if there's a reason or anything I could help with. And, and do you find people are receptive to that? Or do people come along and say, oh, actually, you're right, let me have this done? And, and, and does that give you a buzz? Definitely. Um, you're listening to Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. We're discussing about cervical cancer and we were discussing earlier about bowel cancer and the real, real importance of screening. It is so, so vital, you know, that we do, do take up these screening tests. And, you know, we always think, you know, we do our du'as, we do our prayers, 
we do our tarabis and everything else so that we have a better life afterwards you know for our hereafter uh, this is important as well for our here and now to make sure that we live a healthy life and we're able to enjoy our, our children our grandchildren uh, and, and 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 see sort of the special occasions for the future um have you have you been sad sometimes when people don't take this up and and people don't take advantage of the screening tests and and actually do struggle yeah, later on of course it's such a um, amazing service that's out there it needs to be utilized we're saving lives we're catching cancer early and and actually that is that is the whole advantage of actually having such a great nhs the nhs i i work in the nhs sort of uh, for uh, uh, one or two days uh, a week uh, you work in the nhs it's such a great organization we have such mm -hmm. great facilities of of the nhs in in this country and we really underestimate the the advantage that we have and we really need to be pushing yeah. uh, that the screening tests are taken up the other services are utilized because we lose out a lot of people lose out don't they yeah they do they don't realize how lucky we are because in, in, in third world countries and countries across the world, they don't have a system as effective as the screening tests and, and many cancers become undetected until it's too late. And um, I think the figures were that a third of cancers are detected in an emergency settings. So until the symptoms or the problems get so bad uh, and they realise that it's too late, yeah. uh, they're detected in A&E departments and then people have only weeks to live or months to live in some cases. Uh, and that really is sad, and that's that's got to be why people are driven to actually to be taking these screening tests. Um, and uh, but, how do you feel when you hear of somebody's diagnosed with cancer and it's so late on? You must have had that experience as well. Personally, no, I've not had that experience, but it, I mean, it makes me feel sad because they could have come if they have missed screenings. They could have come earlier, and something could have been done in advance. Yeah. So. You know, we want to, uh, you know, take this opportunity to really summarise what was said over the last sort of hour or so. Um, screening is vital. It's so, so important to make sure that you live a long and happy life and healthy life as well. Uh, just as much as a diet or an exercise and everything else. We have discussed with bowel cancer, the screening test for bowel cancer, Again, only takes five or ten minutes. It's very quick, very rapid. Cervical cancer, as Yusra has just uh, eloquently described, is only, again, five or ten minutes. These are embarrassing illnesses, but they are curable. And there is a good opportunity, if they're detected early enough, for people to live long and happy lives. Finally, Yusra, what would you like to say to people out there who are listening in? Because... You know, it's uh, it's an opportunity for you and your practice and, in fact, all of the NHS in Leicester and Leicestershire to get a message across. What would that message be? Go for your smear test. Don't be worried. We're there to support you. If you have any questions, come forward and ask. And don't be embarrassed as well. Definitely. Definitely yeah. don't be embarrassed because everybody's going to have this problem and everybody's going to have that screening test. You're not unusual and you're not different to anybody else. And uh, we, we are discussing cancers today and I, I hope everybody's listening to the show please pass the message on to your family to your friends to your relatives how important screening really really is be it cervical cancer be it bowel cancer be it any type of cancer the screening tests are available and they're free on the nhs please use them because they're there to save your life to make sure you live a long and happy life you're you've been listening to the health and well-being show I'm your host, Zafar Hack. This is Radio Ramadan on EVA 102.5 FM. I hope you've enjoyed the show.